What happens when the narcissist sees you with someone else? This scenario envisages the situation between victim and narcissist arising from a romantic ensnarement. You are now with somebody else. You were once romantically entangled with a narcissist, and then that relationship came to an end. You might have escaped. More likely, you were disengaged from. Either way, the formal relationship between you and the narcissist is over. You are no longer husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, partners, whatever it might have been. It's ended. Of course, the narcissistic perspective means that you still belong to us. The lesser and mid-range narcissist operates through this assumption, albeit, of course, not knowing that that is what is behind much of their behaviour. The greater and the ultra recognise this mindset of you belonging to us forever. Notwithstanding that sense of ownership, the formal relationship has ended. And now, you are with somebody else, in a new romantic relationship. If you have been paying attention to my work, you ought to have implemented a no-contact regime, total no-contact regime, for a minimum of six months to allow yourself to recover from your ensnarement, to create a firebreak, to remove yourself from the abuses and, of course, to reduce that emotional thinking that remains lurking. This will have maximised the opportunity to avoid being ensnared a second time. That is a huge risk for you, as an empathic victim, that you will go from the frying pan into the fire. That you will fall prey to such platitudes as the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody new. No, it's not. As an empath with the addiction to narcissists, you are likely to find yourself clambering into bed with another narcissist because your emotional thinking wasn't lowered and even though you might well have read about all of the red flags, you fail to pay attention to them because of your high emotional thinking. But either way, you are with somebody new. The narcissist observes this. The narcissist sees that you have a new paramour. The narcissist sees that you are coupled up with somebody else. Whether it is stalking your social media as a consequence of you entering a sphere of influence, perhaps popping up on a timeline. Perhaps somebody shows the narcissist, look, Here's your ex, stepping out now with Ryan Gosling. Perhaps the narcissist lives in the same town or city as you and has wandered by where you are and sees you exiting the car, smiling with your new squeeze, laughing, exchanging a kiss and running inside, no doubt to get down and do the hanky-panky together. Perhaps the narcissist is strolling along a street and sees you and your new love emerging, smiling, arm in arm from a restaurant. Whatever it might be, whatever the occasion or instance, the narcissist has witnessed you with someone else. What then happens? Whether the narcissist has witnessed a picture of you with somebody else, a declaration on social media that you are with somebody else, or witnessed in person that you are with somebody else, they all go to the same place. It wounds the narcissist. The extent of the wounding varies upon the medium by which this is witnessed. If the narcissist sees a comment on your social media that you're with somebody new, it wounds, but not extensively. If they see a picture of you looking all doe-eyed, with somebody else. It wounds, but not extensively. 
But if we witness you in the round, in the flesh, in person, with this new person, it wounds substantially. Whether you have been disengaged or whether you escaped, it still wounds. Why? You are no longer interested in us. It doesn't matter that we got kicked you to one side. It doesn't matter that you had to escape as a consequence of our behaviours towards you. That is irrelevant. You are no longer interested in us. And this tells us that we don't matter, that we are not important. You are no longer focused on us, and that is unacceptable. Your fuel is going elsewhere. This is a crime against the nation-state of Narkdom. Of course, the lesser and mid-range narcissists don't realise that this is wasted fuel. They just experience the outcome of it. But the greater and ultra realise this. And that is just another mark of your treachery, that your fuel is being directed elsewhere, quite probably to somebody who doesn't actually need it, assuming you have not been caught by another narcissist. But that does not matter. That fuel is ours, and you're sending it elsewhere. You remain a traitor. You are signalling to us that we do not matter, that we are not the colossus that we believe ourselves to be. You are telling us that we are unimportant, minuscule. It makes the narcissist feel weakened, unimportant, powerless and vulnerable. And we hate it. It wounds if we disengaged from you. It wounds if we ended the relationship. It wounds if you escaped us. You, of course, haven't intended this wounding to happen. You might not even realise that we've noticed you with this person. But we are wounded nonetheless. There is that sensation within of the fury rising as it is ignited in response to the wounding. That moment of a sinking sensation, despair, frustration, annoyance giving way to the rising fury driven by the response of our narcissism. In that instant, the chasm starts to make its presence felt, fuel levels drop. The impact of the wounding is felt. And then the narcissism kicks in, the automatic self-response, self-defense mechanism designed to protect us from events such as these. Accordingly, when we see you with someone else, we are always wounded. We feel that moment of powerlessness, a moment of dread, a sinking sensation, and then here comes the fury. Wounding threatens our control and reduces our fuel level, and this must not happen, and our narcissism must address this. So what then happens? Well, the actual response to this wounding from the narcissist varies dependent upon a number of different factors, such as the relevant school of narcissist, pre-existing fuel levels prior to the wounding occurring. Is the narcissist in their own relationship with somebody else? Is the person who they're in a relationship with the narcissist at that juncture? And other factors besides. What the, what the narcissism must do is assert control, and will do so through one of the three assertions of control, either direct, indirect, or through withdrawal. And if you go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain, if you haven't already done so, the three assertions of control, you will understand far more about the narcissist and narcissism. In some instances, the narcissist will, driven by the narcissism, assert control directly. And if the narcissist is alone, this might mean that the narcissist will come over and say hello, and be polite, and flatter you. That will be done, in part, 
to assert control over the new person that you're with to draw a reaction, thus asserting control over them indirectly by talking to you and gaining fuel from them, and by appearing to be pleasant, we utilize the facade, and we treat you in a benign way, thus asserting control. Such a response is usually the preserve only of upper echelon narcissists. The ultra, the greater, perhaps upper mid-range. More usually, the response from the much more numerous lower echelon narcissists, from middle-middle range downwards, would be if the narcissism selects the direct assertion of control, and it won't always, but if it does... It may well be that the narcissist would go over and say hello and then warn your new love interest. You want to be careful of her, mate. She'll have all of your money. And it might be done in a seemingly joking style, but it's not. You are being triangulated and smeared in that instance as the narcissist asserts control. It might be, how's it going? Oh yes, all starts off very well to begin with. But mark my word, you'll some come to regret it. I did. If I were you, I'd get out. As the narcissist seeks to derail your coupling by asserting control over both of you. It might be that you suffer a direct attack, leaving the new love interest ignored by us. And instead, the narcissist, particularly where lower lesser, middle lesser, upper lesser type B, would march over and say, Oh, I see you've moved on quickly enough, remember? It's highly likely that the narcissist got rid of you and has moved on elsewhere. But that doesn't matter, because in that instance, the narcissism will tell the narcissist that you were the one that has done the act of treachery, that you were the one which walked off and left the narcissist in the lurch to motivate and drive the narcissist through the revision of history to confront you. So the narcissist will approach and say, you fucking whore. I see you've moved on, can't keep your legs closed. Oh yes, Joanne bury me in a Y-shaped coffin, Cartwright. That's your name. It might be, where lower mid-range, there's a mixture of an explosive insult combined with a degree of pity play. That's right, move on with somebody else and forget all about me, you bitch. I can't believe how you hurt me after everything that I did for you. So where the narcissist is on his or her own, if the narcissism selects, because of the outcome of the various factors that I mentioned earlier and others besides, to basically hoover you and assert control directly, flattery might be used, politeness, charm, but that will be upper echelon. Or a warning will be issued to your new love interest, triangulating you, or you'll be on the receiving end of an unpleasant tirade of insults and accusations. What about if the narcissist happens to be promenading with his or her partner and sees you with someone else? Well, the wounding still occurs, but the response may well be again to hoover you. In this instance, it would be to wave hello and almost point to the person that the narcissist is with as if to say, look what I've got which is what the narcissist is actually saying. By showing off the new possession, which will of course be viewed as eminently superior to you and your new love interest, the narcissist is asserting control by triangulating you with their new partner. The narcissist may just wave from across the street, indicate who they're with, give a nod in di the direction of that individual as if to say, I've upgraded doesn't matter whether objectively that is the case, the narcissist sees it as such, and control is being asserted in this direct fashion, even though no words are spoken. It might be that the narcissist comes over and says hello in person and shows off by introducing you to the new person with a smile, a shit-eating grin of absolute apparent delight for having got the cream, the prize, the top trophy all the while sending denigrating looks towards your choice of partner, as if to say, you've not done very well there, have you? Meanwhile, I've traded up, you've traded down. 
The arrogance of the narcissist done through a series of triangles within triangles, or for the purposes of continuing to assert control over you. In other instances, the narcissism will not allow the narcissist to assert control directly. The wounding being all too great, the narcissism may well perceive that there is too great a risk of further wounding, and as part of its protective nature towards the narcissist, prevent a direct hoover from taking place. Instead, what occurs is the narcissist asserts control indirectly. This might be done, for instance, with the narcissist turning to their new partner and saying, do you see her over there? That's the ex. Thank God I got rid of her and I'm with you. Look at the state of her now. Smearing, which, ins which asserts control indirectly, and the response of the new partner will invariably be supportive. I'm so pleased she chose me, or, oh, goodness me, yes, she does look a bit of a mess. Or, hmm, you were with him, were you? Hmm, okay. Generally speaking, the brainwashed new victim of the narcissist, with emotional thinking being high, falls into the trap, and gives the positive response to the narcissist, which allows the narcissist to feel in the unconscious that control has now been asserted over the other, the former intimate partner primary source. And fuel is received. If the narcissist is alone, the indirect assertion of control may still occur as a consequence of the narcissist making a telephone call to friend or family. Guess who I've just seen? Oh, you should have seen what she was wearing. She's put weight on. I don't know what he's done with his hair, but he looks absolutely ridiculous. And you end up being smeared, not knowing it's happening, but the narcissist engages in petty gossip. This is most likely to occur with lower mid-range, middle-middle range A, middle-middle range B. Passive-aggressive, pussy behaviour. It might also be the case that the narcissist will call a friend or family member and dole out a pity play. I've just seen Leah, and she's with this new guy. I can't believe that she's moved on so quickly. can't believe that she left me, and now she's acting as if I don't exist. Again, a differing perspective of what is going on, but is relayed to this individual who will invariably be sympathetic. Just leave it, mate. She's not worth it. Come round. I'll take your mind off things. The provision of that support, sympathy, allows the narcissist in the subconscious to feel like control has been asserted over the former intimate partner primary source. So in some instances where the wounding has occurred, there will be a direct assertion of control, either where the narcissist is alone or if the narcissist happens to be with somebody else, namely their new partner. If the narcissism does not select the direct assertion of control, then it will shift to the indirect assertion of control it might be that the indirect assertion of control isn't an option or doesn't work. So, for example, the narcissist isn't able to call anybody or tries and nobody answers or isn't with anybody to make a snide comment about the former intimate partner primary source. Therefore, the narcissism moves to the final position of the assertion of control, that of last resort, which is withdrawal. And basically, the narcissism causes the narcissist to think... <laughs> Who does she think she is? She's downgraded with him. She was far better off with me. Or didn't want her anyway. Silly cow. And in such circumstances, the narcissist effectively jettisons any desire to be with the former intimate partner primary source and adopts the position of better off without them or my new partner, if they're not there, is better and withdraws. There will be an insult in the mind of the narcissist, commenting on the state of him or her with regard to the former intimate partner primary source, also commenting adversely in their mind about the person that's been selected. Huh, she's gone, chosen someone f far worse than me. She'd have been better off sticking with me. Or, thank God I got her out of that, look at the state of those two together. And of course, this is the jealousy, this is the envy. This is the need to assert control, but it is always achieved. Accordingly, when the narcissist sees you with someone else, the narcissist will always be wounded. 
The response will vary dependent upon a variety of factors and will lead to either you being hoovered, possibly in a benign way, more usually in a malign way, or as a consequence of there being a response indirectly, or by withdrawal. It all depends upon the relevant factors. More often, the narcissist, particularly where from the lower uh, echelons, is more likely to assert control indirectly or by withdrawal, not having the balls to come and confront you. And instead, you don't even realise that the narcissist has seen you, that the narcissist has responded, but the narcissist has, because as a consequence of the wounding, the narcissist must always nullify that threat to control caused by the wounding and seek fuel elsewhere. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.